Good morning to you all here. It's the third Saturday in March, and it's the Birkebrand Arena here for the first time in three years. The trek from uh, Reno to uh, Lillehammer. We are a few minutes away from the start uh, of the uh, men's race. They leave Reno, the 54K trek to Lillehammer as the men begin here at quarter to the hour. Remember the women to follow in just under 15 minutes from now. Guy McCree here taking you through the action with a three times podium finisher here at the Birkebein Arena at uh, Simon Ustensen. As we can see, the skiers, they go straight into the climb. You need to be 100% focused right away. The start is, is so hard and uh, you can't use the first uh, five kilometers to sort of warm up and uh, getting ready. Just absolutely beautiful scenery here. Always make this point in Visma Ski Classics. This is no exception. Forest, tree-lined, absolute pleasure to take in these images. They're underway. The women here, top of the hour, led off by the champion Bib Holder, five-time former winner of it. Britta Johansson Norgren of the Liber 157 ski team, just behind her, Ida Dahl. It seems like all the, the ladies here have, uh, in the front have chosen to, to not use the kick wax. You can see that Teresa here is just chosen to, to double pole. It will be interesting to see if uh, Teresa, how strong she is when she has to double pole the whole race. Time here passing Skramstad Setra is, uh, is quite fast. One of the, the big challenges with the Big Banner race is, uh, you know, the height difference between the starting point and the highest points. It's often a challenge to find the uh, equipment and skis that are uh, perfect all the way. But you can see now that they are moving up to, to Dirtfield and uh, into some steeper parts here. And uh, another interesting name with, uh, with Jens Burman there from the Swedish national team. Even for Therese Johalk here, I'd suggest there's maybe a little bit, the mo one of the most confident personalities, you know, confident in her own ability out there. A little bit of uncertainty. Okay, can I pull this off? If they're still together uh, in a group uh, when they reach uh, the highest point there on Mittfjelle, I might not think she's the, she's the favorite anymore. And they're coming through here uh, towards uh, Rautfjelle, the first of the two climb competitions. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, isn't it, how that shakes out and then indeed what they can do after that. There can be opportunities there to, uh, to affect the race. It's quite a strong wind. It's not blowing their way. So I think it's a tough headwind here. And uh, I think that's explained why the, the group is still so big, uh, why we haven't seen anybody trying to, to set the pace higher. Can someone else take over, please? <laughs> the snow is often very dry up here. The conditions are probably not the fastest at this point of the course. For here as they come through to Raud Fialet. Remember, it's the top seven uh, that score here. It's 100% point scoring here. Yeah, darling, here it's not quite worked out for him um, overall there because uh, Magnus Vesterheim has got in ahead of him there in terms of the pro team. Britta is, uh, is struggling really hard with, uh, with Therese's pace here now. And this is a bit more the the kind of the Birkebeiner in it that we know rewards aggression. It's not cagey. It's Really, really full speed, aggressive uh, skiing here. And we're starting to see that in the women's race here with these three at the moment. And you can see Britta Johansson Norgren just struggling to keep in touch with them. Wow, I mean, that's disastrous. Absolutely disastrous for Matisse in there. You know, the steep section there, 500 meters to go on this, wearing those backpacks, of course. The backpacks, of course, a big part of this race. If you're not aware, wondering why they're wearing that with three and a half kilograms of weight. It's uh, all part of the history of this race, uh, protecting the future king. Crown Prince Hakon, uh, the uh, the little baby that they, uh, they rescued and did this course in reverse. And it's all in respect to the history of uh, saving the, the future king. It's another element to, to handle in this race as they come through to the climb checkpoint here. It's not too popular among uh, some of the skiers, I know. and it's you know the it's a desperate uh, fight you know to to get those sessions with the with the backpack on. Who's going to take the Route Fjellet climb competition? It looks like it's going to be uh, Astrid Oiris Lynn there through for the maximum points. She's in third place overall, so she's going to move up. Johansson Norgren to take 
12 points there from this check. Was talking to each other. I think they agreed to, to work together, at least down to, to Costa Setra and uh, maybe some kilometers up to midfield as well. They realized they need to work together. They don't want to be caught by Marit and Britta. They have started the climb up to midfield, but uh, as we can see, the group is, uh, is still quite big. Uh, we have Musgrave here in, uh, pushing in the front. We see here Tarashla trying to, mm -hmm. to push hard. Uh, he's getting tired of the pace being slow there. So <laughs> this is interesting to see that, that he wants to, to make a difference. He's had a look over his shoulder many, many times here, just going, there are too many guys here for my liking in this group. I have to try and do something about this. And he's still trying. He's just trying to figure out what to do here because this is a large group at the moment, just over 20 and a half uh, Ks to go here. Whoa! Look how strong he's. Let's. Uh... Whoa! He's absolutely torching the rest of them here. I mean, here, yeah, he just has a look round here near guard. He wants the points, but is this uh, a bit of a, a jack in the box tactic here from uh, near guard here in the context of the race? Maybe he fancies uh, the chance to affect the race here up to midfield. And I think that just shows shows that he's uh, he's at his absolute best form. Everybody that's done the race know how steep that part is, and you know the speed he held up there. It's uh, that was uh, that was quite amazing to look at. It's Emil here taking some responsibility in the in the group there, getting a little bit closer. If he doesn't close the gap now, it, the, the gap might grow. It seems like uh, Emil is able to to close down the gap now. It seems like Marit and Britta is, is working good together. It's definitely an advantage for them to, to be able to ski together than uh, each for themselves. You see that the, the, the gap is, uh, is coming down, so mm. they need to stop talking start skiing yeah i know <laughs> i was about to say there's a lot of chat going on between uh the norwegian queens here the atmosphere uh from you know from midfield and uh, all the way to to Shushan is is often very very good here 40 k's in two hours in to get this sort of support you know it must be absolutely massive It is some high speed parts uh, they're entering now. It's definitely important to, to stay on your skis. <laughs> it's, a, it's a critical part to fall. Uh, it'll be hard to take up that time again. You need to stay focused. There they are through midfield at Slim. Dora Slim with the maximum points. Johan just a second or so behind. Flitten there, the top three. Nearguard here leading, but he's just looking to try to position himself. A few words over the shoulder to teammates. And Andreas Nearguard, who's won this race before in 2018, is uh, trying to make his position now, trying to take up position, but there are others with him as well. 500 minutes to go here now as they come into the stadium here and another sprint finish. Andreas Nearguard, the yellow champion bib, is there ahead of Max Novak. Well, too many to mention here, to be honest. 400 meters to go, but he hasn't got this yet. He's just steadying himself at the moment, Nearguard here. There are others who could deny him here. Now into the final straight, could show his power, show his purpose, show his poise. Andreas Nearguard is coming through here to the line. Look at this power from Nearguard here. And it's going to be enough for him and win the Berkebein Renette for a second time. Ahead of Max Novak, Neil Pearson in third. Stunning show of strength and determination from Andreas Nearguard to win again in Vesma Ski Classics and stretching his lead in the Yellow Champion Bib competition as well. And Max Novak back on the podium there, finishing second. I was going to say to you with 500 meters to go that uh, Emil Passion looked quite cooked, but managed to get around and he took the third place. They were all there a couple of seconds back. Just over 13 k's to go. Two minutes to Britta Johansson, Norgren and Marit Jürgen. I think it's nice to see Teresa pick up that challenge to do the big band race uh, at the end of the season and at the end of her career and even doing it with no kickbacks. It's tough of her to do it only double point. 
First of all, it looks like uh, Austria has fantastic skis. It's opening up a little gap there to Teresa, and uh, I don't know, suddenly Emilia was uh, some seconds behind there on the defense in, in some of the downhills. I don't know why. She has lost contact with the leading duo here now. We're not far away from the stadium in uh, Lillehammer, just over a kilometer to go. Who's going to win this? 600 meters to go. This is going to be even tighter than the men. This Lynn looks really, really smooth here at this point. If they come round the bend here, 400 to go now. These two going for the victory. Here's Astrid Oris Lynn here coming through. Bettine Kateng Edison. She's timed this beautifully. Therese Johaug has beaten everyone on this winter. She's making the push. Can Johaug respond here? Or is she going to run out of track? Here overall, she's coming through. Johaug is trying to push, trying to push through to the end. She can't do it, Johaug here. Astrid Oris Lynn is, she's got it. She backs up the Marcel Oppet. Victory to win the Berkebeiner Renet. Brilliant from Oris Lind. A really strong performance and also Emilia here taking third place. She looks so strong. Astrid Oris Lind winning that uh, sprint finish. Pretty Hansen Norgren uh, fourth ahead of Marit Björgen. It's a special feeling to be in this kind of shape because it doesn't happen uh, often. Uh, rarely you are in this kind of shape and today it was it was not easy but it was quite easy for me so uh, that doesn't happen a lot. When me and Andreas managed to get away, instead we saw the opposite effect of team uh, team tactics because uh, Hull uh, dragged us in, so it was just uh, every man for himself in the end. Yeah, maybe I have to change my uh, tactics uh, because I won solo, so I have to go solo more. I lost two sprint now, so mm, must rethink my plan. I think uh, the start field today was so strong, so you can't get any higher prestige in the race than, than today. So, yeah, it's a dream come true. Oh, I think uh, double bowling is the way now. Uh, I, I think if I have a uh, wax today, I have no chance to, to be to the podium. So I'm really happy that I could fight for her till the end. Being first uh, down to Ingalomi there, uh, choosing the wrong track, and I think I'm gonna regret that for the rest of my life, to be honest. <laughs> Extra cool to ski with Teresa since this is the, her last season. Uh, I think it's kind of sad, <laughs> but uh, yeah, really cool to have her here.